this is probably the toughest group that I am going to predict. And I don't say that with just a grain of salt, but really, this is probably the toughest group that I have to predict. And this is probably the group that I always will have second thoughts and doubt about it. And I know there are other tough groups out there to predict. Um, one that I can think of on the top of my head is group H, which we'll get to on the last day of the of this this time before the World Cup begins. But this is a really tough group because you got teams like Argentina, Iceland, Croatia, and also Nigeria. And I really think all four teams can easily have a legitimate argument of getting out of the group. But as you probably know, there's only two of those teams can make it through. Two other will have to say goodbye to the World Cup after these group stage match. And let's take a look of who exactly are those two teams that will have to say goodbye to the World Cup after these three games. And like I said, I'm going to have doubts about it. And that I, in some way, kind of wish these two teams that I put in third and fourth will prove me wrong. Because in some way, they definitely deserve to move on to, to the next round. But either way, starting in fourth place and... This is probably the one that will always come back to haunt me. And I really, really don't want to put this team there. I really don't. I am actually going to be supporting this team as my second team. Uh, besides the fact that I am obviously going to be supporting England in the World Cup. Because I have family trait that is from England. I also want to support Iceland because of the the fan culture and just the way that this team is the ultimate underdog and you know there's just something about this team you know we we, we talk about all these underdog story in the world cup we talk about all these teams that you look in the world cup that you wouldn't think that they they definitely could make it through and definitely don't belong there but somehow they do and maybe they can make it out of the group iceland is probably the most unique one and the reason why I say that is that nobody thought that they were going to be making the World Cup. Guess what they decided to do? They they made it to the World Cup. Nobody thought that they were going to do well in the Euros, even though they made it through the Euros. Guess what? They make it out of their group. And nobody said that they were going to beat England in that, that knockout stage. And everybody thought that England was just going to get through. Guess what happened? Iceland beat England and okay yes they got absolutely destroyed in the next match by France and pretty much just got fined out but this is a team that despite the fact that clearly it does not have a lot of talent this is probably one of the weakest team in the tournament and in this group and the only two guys I can think on top of my head that could be a difference maker of this team is going to be Gilfi Sigerson and Guth Menesson who plays for Burnley but it's just something about this team and it's just something about this the belief and the the chemistry of this team is the reason why this could be be a team that maybe provide another shock in the world cup but the only thing and the only reason why I put them in fourth is that I just have a feeling this Cinderella story is going to eventually hit midnight and that I feel like teams are going to figure them out Teams are eventually going to know what exactly they do. You know, Iceland has always been the element of surprise. But I just feel like now that they have done all these kind of element surprise, that eventually teams will know what they, they're up to. And, yeah, and they're, they're in a group that has other teams that certainly are hungry to make it out of the group and certainly have a lot to prove. So... It's not going to be easy for Iceland to get out of this group. But then again, I really want them to prove me wrong. And if there's one team that I want them to prove me wrong the most, it has to be Iceland. Because that is the team that I'm going to definitely support and hope that they can make it out of the group. But yeah, in third place, and this is another team that definitely could be making out of the group but the reason why i put them in third is because like i said only two team can make it out of the group and i put nigeria there 
uh, not just because of the fancy kit that they have might come back to haunt them, which, by the way, their kit is okay. I mean, I've I seen it already, but, you know, it's not like, in my opinion, it's not the best kit in the World Cup. And I know a lot of people are buying it, and I might think about buying one. I actually haven't ordered a Nigeria kit whatsoever. But, you know, Nigeria, obviously the reason why they potentially could be moving on is because of how good this attack is. I mean, this is a very, very exciting team. you got a bunch of guys on the attack that plays for high-profile Premier League team. you got um, Musa and D, who plays for Leicester City. you got Victor Moses, who plays for, for my team, Chelsea. And you also have, oh God, I forgot... Who, who it is? Oh, Alex Owobi, who plays for Arsenal. And although he hadn't, didn't really have a very good season with Arsenal, he's still a very top quality player for this Nigerian team. However, the only downfall that I will say about Nigeria, and the, maybe the reason why that they might not qualify out of this group, is the defense. And let's just say that this defense is really, really bad. And also the fact that they don't have a reliable goalkeeper. Like the goalkeeper that they were hoping to rely on either got themselves injured or they just decide to not go to the World Cup because their playing days are just over. So that is going to be the thing that will ultimately haunt Nigeria. And I know Nigeria, obviously, they can still boost themselves saying that well we beat Argentina we beat the team that is also in our group 4-2 yeah that was a friendly okay and I don't think a friendly will determine what's going to happen in the World Cup and for people that still said that the friendly is going to determine the resort in the World Cup you are just crazy so I think that Nigeria, if their attack is able to just be good enough, and I have a feeling that they're going to be have to heavily rely on scoring a lot of goals. And there are teams in this group that are very compact in terms of the defensive end. That is going to it's going to be interesting to see how they are able to to kind of break down those teams. But this is definitely a team that can can definitely make it out of the group and maybe provide some shock. In, in this year's World Cup. But yeah, in second place. And, you know. I put Croatia there in second place. And then moving on. Is because I feel like this is probably the year. That they finally figure it out. I mean, we all know that Croatia has a very talented squad. You know, they have the two. Ivan. Ivan Perisic and Rakitic. They also have. Modric in that midfield and they also have have a world-class striker well I wouldn't say completely world-class but they also have a guy that scored an absolute wonderful goal a absolute worldy of a bicycle kick just a couple of years ago that is Mario Mandzukic and you know I know Croatia in the past they have completely let down their fans and they just completely underachieved so much. Like what happened in the last World Cup where for some reason they couldn't get out of the group. Despite the fact that they had a very similar group like this. And you would think that... I really think that Croatia doing this period where I really think this is kind of like the golden generation for them. And the fact that this is probably maybe one of the last World Cup that you would say is that some of their... their core player that they have right now can actually make a huge impact and really this core that they have is now at its prime this is the the time where croatia should be making a run and should be potentially get deep into the tournament because of this squad and i just feel like that hunger and that desire of trying to pretty much put those failure in the past in major tournament will be the reason why they will move on to the next round although like i said you know that failure in the past and the fact that it just always seems like there is some issue with this croatian national team of how the chemistry are just not there with this team as good as there is a lot of talented player in this team the chemistry is just in some way kind of a little bit out of whack 
whenever they go to big tournament. And chemistry is probably the most important thing in terms of trying to get your team successful in a World Cup. It's definitely not going to be the players that you have. I mean, you can have the best player in the world. You can have, like, let's say, maybe Messi, Neymar, or Ronaldo in the same team as in the World Cup. But as long as they are being selfish and they have no chemistry on whatsoever, it doesn't matter. They probably will get knocked out of the group stage. So, yeah, that's going to be something that Croatia really need to figure it out. And just hoping that this is probably finally the year that they can just get over that hump and finally show that the quality that they have on this team will be shown in, in this big tournament that is the World Cup. And in first place, and this is probably a lot of people's favorite to move on to this group, it's going to be Argentina. But there still obviously is going to be dealt. But first, let's get to why I think and why many people think that they're going to make it through. First, it's pretty obvious they have Messi. And if you are a team that have Messi in there, you know that you always have a chance to be successful. And, you know, I just have a feeling that this is going to be another World Cup where Messi will have to carry this team. I mean, you look at this Argentina team and you look how when they play those friendlies and in these last couple of World Cup qualifying game when they did not have Messi, you look how horrible they were. Like, it feels like without Messi, this team is an absolute train wreck. And this is a team that even without Messi, they have some talent on their team too. You know, they have Sergio Aguero, they have Di Maria, and they also have Ultimenti there. But without Messi, they just... They just don't look like the same Argentina team that you would think that they made it to the World Cup final a couple of years ago. So I just have a feeling that Messi is going to have to try to carry this team again. And I really think that this year, Messi will just give it all his best. Because let's face it, this is probably his last year of potentially making an impact in the World Cup. I mean, he's now 31 years old. He'll be 35 when he goes to the 2022 World Cup. And I'm not saying that he won't be at that World Cup, but, you know, the Messi that we all know, the Messi that is certainly arguably considered one of the best players of all time, you know, the only thing that is missing in his, his legacy, and certainly... If in the next couple of years and maybe in the near future when he does retire, the only things that, you know, if he can get it done in the World Cup and certainly for his country, Argentina, there's always going to be that doubt that, you know, yes, Messi has done so much thing with his club, Barcelona, but at the end of the day, he was never able to achieve what his fellow countrymen Diego Maradona did which is win a World Cup for Argentina and you know this is he this this is going to be very interesting to see how Argentina going to play and also the fact that you if you don't just look at at just the 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 Messi factor with this Argentina team you also wonder how is this team actually going to be as good as they were uh, a couple of years ago and my kind of answer is probably not because you look at the way that this rest of the team is, it definitely is not as strong as it was a couple of years ago. And the manager that they've been having, they have changed a couple of manager. They now have former Sevilla manager Jorge Sampaoli as their manager. And his philosophy clearly does not fit this Argentina team. Um, his philosophy is more that he wants his team to press high and certainly want his team to to just want want his team to be very speedy and have that pace. Well, this Argentina team does not have that. I mean, besides maybe Messi and Aguero and maybe Di Maria, it's not a very fast Argentina team. There are a lot of slow guys on this team. And it's just very recently that Sampoli finally understand and decided to change that tactics. But it just feel like Maybe it's a little bit too late of him changing that tactics because, you know, it, it's just 
he, he changed that tactics like just a couple of weeks ago before the World Cup. And whenever you see a manager change his tactics and completely change the system just weeks before the World Cup, that is never a good sign. And a, a that is always a sign that could potentially things are not going to go well for Argentina. But we're going to see how this Group D is going to play out. This is definitely going to be a very exciting group and definitely a group that there's going to be teams that is going to completely prove me wrong. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what do you think of this group. Make sure you leave your prediction of who is going to finish where. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys next time. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for Group E.